you need to fix blown out skies, then stick around as in this video, I'll be showing you how to do just that with DxO Photo Lab 8. Do note though that if you're a beginner, more than any other editor, you need to spend time to understand Photo Lab's unique tools to get the most out of it or risk getting disappointed. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video as we run through four tips to help you fix blown out skies using DxO Photo Lab 8. Now before we go on to the tips, let me just inform everyone of a Valentine's Day promotion DxO is running for all my esteemed viewers, which gives 20% off DxO products. So if you are thinking of purchasing Photolab or any other DxO software, now is your chance to get a great deal. Do check out the description for details. Now with that out of the way, let's move on to the tips. The first tip is to use the right global adjustment tools. While it is true that DxO has an array of global adjustment tools that can be used to fix skies, it is important to note that the performance of the tools varies whether you are editing a RAW or JPEG file. To understand this, let's start off by editing a JPEG file. While it might seem intuitive to use the highlights or exposure slider, similar with other RAW editors, when using Photolab, it's actually best to use these sliders sparingly or not at all when working with JPEG. Looking at a first example, you can see how the highlight adjustments makes the highlights in the image turn to gray, reducing the overall contrast and producing an artificial looking result. In addition, the blue in the sky is also now looking washed out from the adjustment. Switching to the exposure slider, the results look equally as bad. Checking out another JPEG image, you can see the same subpar result when using those same sliders. So if the highlights or exposure slider doesn't give the best results, which global adjustment tool should we use when editing skies with JPEG files? Instead of highlights or exposure, I would actually recommend using the curves adjustment. To demonstrate, let's fix the same image, but this time let's use curves. I'll manipulate the curve to form a reverse S. And as you can see, the result is more pleasant, producing an image with better looking contrast, color, and detail. Here is a comparison of the results using the highlight slider and the curves tool. As you can see, it's a world of difference. Moving on from JPEG to RAW, when editing with a RAW file, which contains many times more data than a JPEG file, I would recommend going back to using the highlights and exposure sliders as Photolab does work better with raw images and produces more pleasing results as you can see here. The second tip is to use the right masking tools. While you can certainly fix skies with global adjustments, one drawback is Photolab's global adjustments do tend to affect an overly broad range of tones, which we've talked about before in previous videos. For example, its highlight slider affects not just the highlights, but also the midtones, which can often negatively impact image quality. In those cases, use masking tools to limit the adjustments to just the sky. But which masking tool is best? While DxO allows you to choose from up to seven masking types, for skies, I would limit the choices to just two, the gradient tool and the control line. Just these two will be sufficient to cover any type of masking problem involving skies from the very simple to the most complex. The third tip is to use the right adjustment tools in masked areas. While you might think that you can apply the same global adjustment tools to a masked area, that's not necessarily true. To demonstrate, let's fix this JPEG image with an overblown sky using local adjustments. I'll mask the sky with the gradient tool. So with the sky masked, which tool is best to bring back the details? As this is a JPEG file, you might think the curves tool, which was recommended in tip one. Unfortunately, looking at the local adjustments panel, you can see that there is no curves tool present, demonstrating that in Photolab, curves is only available as a global adjustment. So if not the curves tool, should we use the highlight slider then? The answer is 
still no. As you can see, the result of the highlight adjustment is still terrible. The sky loses contrast and bright highlights once again turns to an ugly gray. The exposure slider once again doesn't do any better at all. So if it is not the highlight slider, nor exposure slider, nor curves, which tool should you use? Although counterintuitive, I would actually recommend the mid-tone slider. As you can see, reducing the mid-tones produces better looking contrast and color and more desirable appearance. If mid-tone performance is still lacking though, and you desire to bring down the brightness of the sky even more, the second tool I would recommend is the clear view adjustment, which as you can see here, goes a long way to help reduce the washed out look by making the colors pop. Finally, you can also try the HSL panel to lower the brightness of specific colors in the sky. In this case, that would be blue. Here is the before and the after. Moving on from JPEG to raw images, Photolab's standard tone adjustments performs much better with raw, so you can use both the exposure slider or highlight slider with raw images. I personally prefer the exposure slider, which I find gives the most natural looking results, although highlights, clear view, and the HSL adjustments also work well. The fourth tip is to know when and how to use the control line. While using the gradient tool works great for simple skies, if you take enough landscape photos, at some point you will come across a scene that requires more sophisticated masking. To demonstrate, let's work with such an image. As you can see, the sky is obstructed by various elements, which are protruding the horizon. Using a gradient tool is not ideal in this case, as it has no facility for distinguishing between the actual sky and the surrounding elements. And as you can see here, the adjustment is incorrectly spilling over to those elements. Also, it is important to note the disadvantage of a gradient tool, which can only be refined by a brush and erase tool, which both lacks any edge detection required for precise masking. As such, for more complex problems, the best tool to use is the control point, which does allow for precise masking, although it is more complicated to use than the gradient tool. To demonstrate its usage, I'll drag in the control point. I'll move the picker to a point within the sky. Unfortunately, with the current overlay mode, it's harder to see the mask's quality. As such, I'll change the mask to black and white. There, as you can see, it makes it much easier to see the mask's details as I move the picker. Next, I'll smoothen the mask via the built-in sliders. I'll reduce the chroma to reduce reliance on color, which will help improve the smoothness of the mask. Finally, I'll increase masking precision by adding negative control points to exclude unwanted elements which are not part of the sky. There, the mask is looking good. Let's lower the brightness with the recommended adjustment tools discussed in tip three. Here is the before and the after. Once again, a big difference. So there you have it, four tips to help you fix overexposed or blown out skies in DxO Photo Lab 8. I hope you've learned something new, or if you have other suggestions to help fix blown out skies, write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to check out the Valentine's Day promotion in the description. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.